I might make a start. Look, uh, firstly, thank you for the opportunity to present today. Um, as Jen mentioned, my name is Craig and uh, I work with Land Tasmania. And Land Tasmania manages the services uh, and authority of information uh, about land and property uh, in Tasmania. The services include the collection, um, maintenance and delivery of a range of data sets uh, around land titles, maps, property sales, uh, survey and valuation information, with the vast majority of the information being made available through the list and list infrastructure. Over the last uh, several years, Land Tasmania has been transferring back a number of um, old historic documents to Tahoe uh, for safekeeping. These have included our county charts, our town charts, our admiralty charts, roll plans, flat plans, field notes and books. And whilst it's great that we've removed these documents from circulation for preservation, um, there still is actually a need to have these documents available so that, uh, as they're referred to within gazettals and obviously within title information. So over the last number of years, Land Tasmania have put in a number of programs of work um, to capture and make this data that we're transferring across off those um, old charts available to both Land Tasmania staff but also to the public via this map. Um, so in this case uh, we've taken up a number of proactive approaches and tried to digitise a lot of that information and make that information available as layers deliverable through list map. And a good example here is the digitisation of our early grant charts. Uh, here we've captured the grant fabric and if we have a look we can see here down the side this is a representation of the early grant chart and we've captured the Commonwealth, the grant, hydro land, proclaimed crown land, reserved crown land, state forest, town areas, unallocated crown land and water. Um, as part of this process, by taking a lot of the information off the early working charts, we've also collected and now show digitally the um, land district boundaries and again, if we turn on the parish boundaries, we can see those as well. All this information, if we click with inside the map view, we're able to then get a search results. So if we click on our search results here, we can see that this is actually highlighted the parcel of land in terms of the original grant. But then also in the search results, provided information about that grantee, the area of land, the lot number, uh, and the actual CPO reference. If we go down further, we can then see the overall extent of the parish itself and the parish name, and then drill down further again into our search results. We're actually seeing uh, the overall extent of the land district. As part of this work, we've also captured the overall extent, and just let me go and see the overall extent of a lot of this information so that Monmouth, if we look at it, is quite a large area, but we've actually broken it down into the overall uh, individual charts that each of those working chart areas cover. And we've also shown in the Black Pash area the uh, extent of the proclaimed towns. While all this information is really great, and certainly um, we've captured a lot of information and put it in a digital environment, um, we also recognise that uh, viewing the original document is also a valuable source of information, because there's a lot of other information that we haven't captured as part of this process um, back through into layers. And so we've uh, recently implemented a, uh, a program of work to capture a lot of this information and scan the original documents, mosaic those and also rectify those. <coughs> and you can now start to see for the state as it comes up a bit slower the uh, mosaic early grant charts and again if we turn on our grant information and screen it back a lot of that same information has come in, is, is being brought through and if we click on the attributes for this particular parcel here, again 
James Turnbull. So the information on the chart has come through. Um, we also have, as part of this process, documented the town charts as well. So if we turn on the town charts and change the order of display, we can then see, again, the detail that's been captured as part of these early grant town charts. And it's a little bit fuzzy at the moment, but when this catches up, again, you can see the detail. And a lot of this information, a lot of this additional information, like the easements, a lot of the acquisitions, a lot of the early charts, that type of information hasn't been captured as part of that grant process, but still these uh, raster images are an invaluable source. It's also important to note that a lot of this information is also available through uh, Land Tasmania's Open Data Policy. Um, and that allows then other users to download that information, incorporate this data into their GIS systems, and then undertake more complex spatial and attribute analysis. Um, aerial imagery. We'll also be also transferring across a number of negative film rolls that have been captured as part of our aerial imagery, aerial imagery program. Land Tasmania has had an aerial imagery program uh, in place since 1942 uh, and has captured various parts of the state at different scales to support their Tasmat mapping programs over the years. Uh, several years ago we started on um, scanning and capturing an aerial uh, archive copy of this imagery um, with this work being done by uh, a Leica photogrammetric scanner. Uh, a lot of this information is actually available through the list and or through the aerial photo viewer. This is actually one of the layers in the list at the moment and shows the actual early planning documents for the 1982-1983 flying season. So if we zoom in, this is the planning document used to start to detail the flight lines. And then if we actually overlay the photo coverages, we can then see the resultant images. And if we click within these areas, excuse me, we can see then the attributes that, we've hold, that we hold against this particular area. It's, it shows us the actual film number, or film, the run number, and sorry, the run and film number, the type of image it is, the capture and the flying season, and then we've also got a link back through to a preview page, which shows us um, a very low res scan of that particular image. It also shows us, more importantly, the overall extent. So if we were wanting to have a look at or think that this particular image would suit our purpose, we can then see by turning on the other layers whether it's actually going to sort of fit for purpose and have enough coverage for our area of interest. The same information is also available through our aerial photo viewer. With, again, not so much the early planning documents being available, but certainly the photo centres. And if we click on some of these photo centres, here again we're getting the film frame number, the run, the scale, the date, and again the season. And we also have then another link off to a, a thumbnail, low-res low thumbnail. Going back, oops, I've lost it. Just bear with me for a sec. The difference between the aerial photo viewer and what uh, the specialist layers in this map is that the aerial photo viewer really only shows at the moment film based photography, um, but the actual aerial photo viewer also has the capability of showing not just this flying season, but the, the imagery that we have available within our library that's also been also rectified. Uh, it also has the capability of instead of going back to this map having to find the actual uh, layer itself if we go, we can do the same sort of work by changing the slider bars 
to indicate uh, a year date and then again play around with the scales and then the actual uh, screen will return the information and the images captured as part of that flying season. Um, a lot of this information, historical information, is certainly important um, and allows for the study of monitoring, forecasting uh, and managing natural resources and human activities. Um, the final bit for me is that there's a number of other resources available that uh, highlight the importance of having this aerial imagery available. Uh, and certainly these two next slides, the swipe tools that are available, publicly available, show certainly the then and now. So this information uh, on the right are all 1946 um, aerial photography and on the left is 2013 and we have 14 instances around the state. And you can see by using the slider bar and you can zoom in and out here if you need to, uh, you can certainly see the uh, societal and economic changes sort of throughout the region. And you can see if we sort of focus on just um, around the port, the TT line, you can see the sort of change um, that's occurred within that area. Again, if we look back at uh, Taruna, again 1946 to 2013 imagery, you can see again the development that's just sort of occurred within the area. The final one is the swipe tool for the spreads book. This is certainly um, using the same type of information, except the information on the right is uh, taken from the 1841 survey by uh, James Sprint. Um, there were overall 70 different surveys. We scanned, um, orthorectified and mosaic those. And again, if we zoom in, the information that's actually shown, and I'll wait for it to catch up a little bit. So you can see here, if we start looking at some of the corners, some of the intersections of our streets, the information that's been captured back in 1841 by James Sprint is just incredible. If we uh, zoom back over towards the rivulet, you can see if we, as we pan backwards and forwards how that rivulet sort of dances sort of underneath Cat and Fiddle and Centrepoint Arcade. The accuracy is just frightening, it's amazing. Um, yeah, so look, these two different swipe bars are certainly available and, and certainly show the power of historical data uh, and how within Land Tasmania we've utilised a lot of this information. Um, that's me. Thank you for listening. Um, and please come and have a chat to me after if you want some more information about this map or any of the links that you've seen today.